Matt, congratulations. Welcome back. Uh, have you ever run out of gas in real life? I have ran out of gas in real life, and um, I was actually leaving an airport. I was I was interviewing to try to drive these different ASA cars, and I was trying to figure out what I was going to do. It was in the beginning of my uh, racing career. I'm driving down an interstate, and I ran out of gas. And a police officer stopped and came up, and he wasn't in a real good mood, and I was, I was starting to walk toward the gas station, which is about two miles away. He said, what are you doing? I said, I'm walking to the gas station. And he said, I ran out of gas. And he's like, well, why'd you run out of gas? I could tell he kind of had a bad attitude. I said, because I'm stupid. I said, I wasn't paying attention. I'm just stupid. I ran out of gas. He goes, since you told me the truth, I'll give you a ride to the gas station. So he gave me a ride up there to buy a gas can, drove me back to my car, and uh, put some gas in and drove home. So that's the only time I ever ran out of gas. Did you know that the other drivers were running out of gas, Logano and, and uh, Bush? I mean, could you could you tell or being told by your crew? Yeah, you know, I, I knew we were running fourth, and they said Joey ran out of gas, and it was still three laps to go, which is – a lot of laps at Pocono to track that big. So that concerned me a little bit. And then I saw the 78 drive the pit road, so I knew that, that Kyle was the only one out there still running. And uh, so I slowed down a little bit to make sure we, we saved a little bit more. And then when I came off turn one, they, I saw Kyle was out going down in the in the turn two, and they told me he was out. So then uh, I was trying to resist the urge to floor it. I just wanted to floor it and get going as fast as I could so I could coast. But um, I knew that obviously burned more fuel, so I just tried to make sure I got back to turn three with the engine running and uh, figured then we had a shot. Can you can you do something to avoid running out of gas or getting the most out of your gas tank? You, you know, you can. There's a lot of little things you can do to save a little bit, um, which we, we start. The key, I think, is to start early in the run. And, and uh, you know, Kyle and Joey and, and the 78, we're all running real hard because so they're all up there right by the lead. And I had a really poor restart, so I was back a little bit farther. And, and I wasn't going to be able to run those guys down just off of lap times. Um, you know, so I was able to save a little bit early in the run, not a lot, but a little bit. And then as the run went on and I got by Jimmy and I saw Jimmy backing off to save fuel, I was able to uh, to back off some more and, and – and save quite a bit more than those guys did. We're talking to Matt Kenseth. He's the driver of the number twenty Dollar General Toyota. Joining us, Dan <laughs> Patrick Show. Go to dollargeneral.com and save twenty percent today. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. See, I, and, I uh, you know, if, if they don't have it, you don't need it. You know, for me, um, buy a lot of diapers there. So twenty percent off as many diapers I've went through the last five years here is a, is a good deal. How old is your son? My son is twenty two, and my daughters are uh, one, four, and six. What if they want to race? You know, I'm uh, I'm I'm going to discourage the girls from racing at all. Why? Um, I mean, I have a lot of answers to that question, but I, I just think that um, I just think there's other things they could be doing. Have you have you talked to your wife about that potential conversation? Uh, you know, she's uh, not real interested in them racing either. So. Um, you know, I, I think we're okay with that. But they're they're young enough, and um, honestly, by the by the time they grow up, I, I obviously won't still be racing. So I think that they'll probably have other interests by then. Can you change diapers? Yeah, I've changed a lot of diapers in my day. I like it when Grandma's down because you can always make Grandma do. <laughs> All right, uh, what, is it uh, what what would be faster, a uh, pit stop or diaper change? Man, my picker guys are really, really good, but, um, you know, as long as it's just a number one diaper, I can whip it out pretty quick. <laughs> well, what's messier, though, your uniform after a race or uh, a diaper? <laughs> for sure, for sure the diaper. I've been, um, um, I've been pretty good at keeping my uniforms clean, knock on wood, uh, so far in my career. What kind of expectations do you have for your Packers this year? Man, I, I expect them to go all the way. I mean, what do you think? And by the way, I'm I'm a big fan. I got to tell you a real quick story. I always listen to your your podcast. Of course, I haven't lately, but I've, I've listened to it all the time. So in 2013, we we won a lot of races, got right down to the wire, and Jimmy won the championship, and we finished second. And I was really disappointed. And it was Monday morning, and I was driving my truck, and I was listening to your podcast, and Jimmy was supposed to be on there, and he was late. And I was thinking to myself, I was like, I would never have let that happen. That would be my number one priority. I would have been there, and I would have been there on time. And then uh, I was really disappointed because he got to be there live on your show, and I lost the championship. And that's when it really sunk in and really, really ruined my day. Just wanted to let you know that. So that the fact that you weren't on the show is when it really sunk in that you didn't win the championship. It did. I just, you know, I turned it on. That was the only thing I was listening to. I didn't really, really watch any of the other media or listen to anything, you know, after the final race at Homestead. And then it sunk in that uh, we had a great year, but, 
but lost the championship, which was uh, the ultimate goal. And you don't get many chances to win those things in your career, and uh, it, that's when it really sunk in that we lost. And he was there doing all that stuff, and I was driving down the road in my truck listening. Okay, what was tougher to get over, not winning the championship or the Packers losing to Seattle? Oh, not winning the championship, but the Packers losing to Seattle was brutal. So I was out in Las Vegas for a test. So I went down to the sports book and I was watching the game. And of course, there were some Packer fans there and some Seattle fans, and everybody's kind of talking a little smack back and forth. And then uh, uh, the funniest thing—well, it's not really the funniest thing—but it's halftime, and I, I get up to go walk to the bathroom. My phone rings, and it's Coach Gibbs. So I answer the phone, and uh, you know, he's like, "Man, your Packers look awesome. You know, they're going to do it. They got this thing. They got control of it." And I'm thinking to myself, the whole time, I was like, "This is bad." <laughs> so uh, yeah, that was a that was, man. That was a that was a Tough one, to, tough one to watch for sure. That was a, a lot of things went wrong. It's always great to have you on, especially after a win, Matt. Uh, congratulations. And once again, the uh, number $20 general Toyota, Matt Kenseth. Uh, thanks for joining us, Matt. Oh, thanks for having me. I appreciate it.